All right, working on a little scoot again here today, and uh, it's just me. It's uh, everybody else is going, and uh, I think we left you off. Mike was uh, over on a lathe, and he was actually these are the the bearings for the the jack shaft. And instead of putting big collars on here, Mike came up with an idea of just uh, relieving this a little bit so that it would catch this this little ring and that would hold them in place instead of using gotta, it's so tight you gotta put that in straight but anyway not only would it look better than the big collars I didn't, I didn't have them in stock so this even worked better but uh, that's what Mike came up with and it was a good idea and uh, I had I I just said that's good you know we just you probably just put two screws in there it'd be fine but uh, Mike said yeah there are three screws and just that little idea his three screws would actually look better and uh, I agreed with him it's funny because I usually come up with the ideas of making stuff look better and he keeps things uh, mechanically right but anyway I could just uh, drill you know just put dots here 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 and here and make it look close and that would be okay but uh, before I do this I'll show you guys how you can uh, divide that into three equal uh, spaces there and make it make them perfect so let me throw you up on a tripod and I'll, we'll show you that real fast alright I'll show you guys what I'm going to do on paper that way you, got, you can always uh, replicate it yourself you see little dirt bike and Mike are they both excel in math you know they're both real sharp guys but uh, I can't. I, don't, I have trouble adding, multiplying stuff like that. So I have to revert back to uh, little tips and tricks that I picked up over the years. But anyway, this is how I would divide that into three equal parts. I'd get a compass. If you guys, if you guys use a compass, get a good one. You know, a good one is only uh, nine bucks, ten bucks, and uh, they work good. So what the, what you would do is uh, first make a circle. I don't know how well this this lead is going to show up on camera. I'll try and make it dark. But anyway, you go, there's your circle, and then what you do, you want to find the center line. So you go right through the dot there. You put a mark up there, mark down here. And then you just, you go, you use the same diameter as that circle. You see that? And then you stick it through this hole, or you stick it through down there, and you make a little mark right here. Am I still on camera view? And a little mark over here. And there you go. You got your three equal parts. And you want to uh, check it out. You just uh, connect the dots here. And then you check it. What we got here? Looks like uh, two and uh, two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. What am I doing? Here? What are you doing, real thing? Here you go. And two and three quarters. So that's how you do it. It's gonna be a little tough. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to put tape over this and everything because I have no way of finding the center. But uh, put tape on there and we'll be fine. So that's it, you know. It's that simple. All right. I taped one of these washers up. I I did decide it was cut. That way I can get it right in the center of that uh, that section I want there. So uh, what I got to do first is uh, I got this thing here. They call it a a center center finder. So what we're gonna do is. Stick it on there. It's pretty handy, you know. It's only only a couple dollars it's worth having in the shop. So if I find one, I'll leave a link for you. But uh, that'll find you the center of that uh, washer, and then you turn it 90 degrees. Would that be 90 degrees? It don't. It don't. It close. Got to be about 90 degrees. Don't even have to be exact. And then I got to try and remember to get my hands out of the way. We we'll just put a little X there. And uh, that's the center. So now, what I did is I, I made sure that I could see where my uh, the meat is. You know, I want to get it like right in the center of that. So uh, we'll stick that there, and then uh, move this, and I want it right about there. 
So uh, I'm going to put a circle there just for fun. We don't have to, but I'm going to. So now, like I say, put your your compass right there. There's one. And there's the other. So that's where we're going to make our uh, we're going to center punch. All right. There you go. You know, it's a shame these bearings aren't a little thicker, because then I could I could punch all these at once. You know. I'm not even close. Yeah, I could put them all together. And drill all all four holes at once. But uh, I don't have anything. I don't know how big that is. That's, uh, that looks like about an inch and a quarter. I don't have anything to hold that, so we might have to do two at a time. Alright, let's drill and tap some holes. Let's get, uh, let's, let's get moving. I'm going to tap it to a, I guess that's a 832 there. It's, I'm not going to put it in the machine or anything like that. It doesn't have to be that. It's not that critical. There we go. I almost hit the hole, huh? Just try to make it as straight as you can. Yeah, I widened the holes on this, so uh, like I said, I'm going to use an A32. Right now, that's a, a hex head, but uh, oh, sorry about that. I thought I thought I was showing the camera, but it wasn't. Yeah, it's a hex head, but uh, I think I'm, I might want to get some uh, button button head Allen screws. 
Yeah, when you're tapping, it starts getting a little tight. You back off, and it breaks the chip. And continue on. How's it look? Is it straight? You guys have better look at it than I do. There we go. It's getting easy. Feels good. finish tapping the rest of these and then I'll show you what it looks like in the end. Alright, <clears throat> got them all done now. Wipe some of the oil off it. Oh, sorry about that. I almost pulled it out of frame. Huh? And then uh, just grab a bigger drill here and uh, debar these holes just to get the little uh, tits off the top so nobody gets hurt. There we go. In the back. You know what we say, if I always your friend. Alright, let's see how it fits here. Let me see if I can, uh, oh, oh, make some room here, can you see it? Alright. In theory, it should work like this. And this goes right over the top here. And we get some screws, put them in there. Hmm, fit pretty good. Alright. You still on frame? Let me tilt it down for you. I'm going to screw this down equally. Like I say, I'm going to change these screws. I'm going to get some, uh, maybe, some uh, button, button head Allen screws. Make them look a little better. Okay. There we go. That's a pretty good idea Mike came up with. Alright, look at that. Perfect screw there. There we go. And the barrel seems to work okay. Can you see that? Alright. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned it. This is what I use for tap and tap magic. It's pretty good stuff. It stinks like hell, but uh, it's good. It's the best on the market. I'll put a link in the description for you guys. Alright, let's move on to something else. Well, I actually have to make another one of these, so I'll do that. There's the other one here. I'll do that while you guys ain't watching, and then uh, we'll get back on to something more important. All right. All right. We've still got a little time left on this uh, video here, so uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do now. Here's our crankshaft, and we realized, well, this is my mock-up engine. I'm just using that for uh, demonstration purposes, but if you look at these two shafts, they're the same. Same length, same diameter and stuff. So I'm going to use this engine just for demonstration, like I say. And here's our clutch, just the clutch we're going to use. And if you look on the end here, it's too short. Let me get my, my, car, my caliper and stick it in here. There's a, a lot of people don't even notice there's a depth gauge on the end of a, a, my, or a, a caliper here. So you're just going to stick it in there. And it wasn't, must not have been zeroed in. There we go now. I was pushing past it. So it's about a half inch to the end of that clutch. And uh, we want to make it maybe uh, stick out a quarter inch. So we'll, we'll, what we need to do is uh, add about three quarters of an inch on that. And let me show you what we're going to do. All right. Yeah, what I'm going to do is this here is a piece of 5 8 shaft. That's what we need. And uh, what I'm going to do is just cut off uh, about three quarters of an inch here face off both ends, drill a hole in it, and then just uh, screw it on. It's got a, it's a, it's a threaded uh, end on here, and I'm just going to put it on here, and then uh, have a little dirt bike clad weld this, and then we'll machine it down to where we need it. You know, it's a little unconventional, but uh, you know, that's, that's what we do in a garage here. You know, it always seems to work for us. and. Uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, these clutches here, you know, they're, uh, they fit like a, a loose condom at best anyway. So, I mean, we, you can see how much play you got there. So, I think it'll work. And if it don't, then, uh, and we ruin it, 
then we'll just wind up cutting that off and uh, drilling it and then uh, pressing in a, a, a piece of this stock you know but uh, to do that we have to go over mics and everything and you know he's got he's got enough of his own stuff to do over there so we'll uh, we'll try this and uh, see how it works Ready to drill a hole in here. It's a quarter twenty bolt, but if you measure a quarter twenty, it's actually not. I don't know how that flexion is going to work, but uh, you know, a quarter inch bolt is uh, twenty four thousandths instead of uh, 0.25. So instead of using a, a quarter inch drill, which is uh, 0.25, I'm going to go with a letter drill, a uh, letter D. And that's uh, 0.243, so that's uh, that's going to get us pretty tight. That's going to, in fact, that's, that should be right there. Maybe have to put a wheel on it to get it in there, but uh, that's what we want. We don't want no slop, so let's do that. I'll bring it back over to the lathe. All right, let's give it a try. All right, you might see some play. I mean, you got you do have play in these little baby lathes, so let's see what happens. Enough to get us started.
felt like it did it. Not perfect, but uh, as tight as you're going to get it. Alright. Good enough for me. Alright. Give me your attention over here. Alright, we finished that up. It came out pretty good. I'm happy with it. And I was able to get this in the lathe over there and line it up. You know, I, I put it in a machine and then uh, put the tailstock in there with a the center thing. And uh, I was able to get it pretty straight. And then I was able to face that off, which was good. I try, at first I tried facing off on a sander and I, I said it wasn't working so luckily I was able to get enough in here and get it straight enough to to face that off and that's good so this uh, this will go in here real nice like oh sorry about that I gotta go over here with my little piece of blue tape alright so anyway that'll go in there nice like that and then what you'll fit on there. Look at that. It's working out pretty good so far. And uh, it's going to leave us with uh, 316 hanging out there. Yeah, I'll be able to uh, put a bevel on that after uh, we do all the work. So. Alright, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. So, uh, what do you say? Enough of this? Alright. Yeah, all I have to do is get the little dirt bike to clad weld the eighth of an inch here. And then we'll machine it down and put a keyway in there and uh, we'll be good to go.